Welcome to the first ever edition of the Future Questions Show. I'm Chris Barnett, I'm a professional futurist, and for many years I've been making videos here on YouTube about future studies topics, and indeed also about computing over on my other channel, Explaining Computers. But the problem I face is that many of the videos I make take a very long time to put together. So if I'm making a video on, say, bioprinting, or a video on, say, future cities, um, I can't do this very often, it takes a long while to do the graphics, and so I can't put up videos like this quite as frequently as some of you um, may potentially like. So what I thought I would do to get the channel a bit more active is to have another thread of, of video, um, a more discussion thread, the future questions show, where um, you can raise questions for me down, down in the comment section down there. I will answer them in, in the next video. I will raise questions as part of the debate we can all discuss in the comment section. And that might get a bit more activity going on. We can share ideas and, uh, about the future. Now, of course, as this is the first time I've done this, I've got a particular problem right now, which is that none of you obviously have asked me any questions. And therefore, what I thought I'd do in this first future question show is to raise a question myself and get someone else to answer it. And recently I was down in London uh, with Friends of the Earth where I've been doing a bit, a bit of work and um, I thought I'd ask my child, the head of science and, and um, policy, how he thought technology could help us build a more sustainable future. Technology has always been a challenge for environmentalists, partly because of the, the, the problems we've seen in the past from uh, use of technology and not really understanding or thinking about the consequences of it and then uh, reaping the reward of that. And uh, obvious examples of that include you know, use of CFCs and the ozone uh, layer. Um, famously, Rachel Carson, her book Silent Spring, pointed at the, the, the very significant downsides of some of the pesticides we were using at that, that, that stage. So environmentalists have generally been a bit nervous about technology. You see that also now within the debates around genetically modified uh, crops and, and the potential for the technology to be released out of control into, into the natural in, environment. But at the same time, uh, we've had to recognise and have always probably recognised that technology has a really important role in, self, in some of the challenges we have. So environmentalists, again, for many years have said, well, actually, we ought to be inv investing in technologies like wave power, like wind power, like solar power. And we're seeing now that many of those technologies have, have come forward and, and use. And as campaigning organisation Friends of the Earth, you know, we've we grabbed hold of the use of technology to communicate our messages much more broadly, hopefully convince more people about the need for action on the environment and that enable more people to take change, obviously through the, through the internet, through smartphones uh, or, or, or whatever. Uh, as we go forward looking towards technology, I think um, uh, the greatest challenge uh, that we have is not so much within the technologies that are being developed, uh, synthetic biology, nanotechnology, 3D printing, all those technologies have a significant potential to help us get out of the very deep hole we've dug ourselves into. The challenge for us is how to point those direct technologies in the right direction. What are the best governance regimes that are needed? Uh, because the technology is going to happen, you know, whether friends of the earth stand with a placard uh, outside the door or not and say, don't use this technology. The technology is going to be developed. It is, they are going to be uh, happening. We ought to now say, how can we control them and point them in a way that is useful for society? And I think one of the great things about some of the technologies that are being developed now, uh, 3D printing is a great example of that, is how actually it might disrupt uh, an economic, economic system that's developed over the last 20 years to be a globalised system with very few actors, if you look at the kind of multinational corporation dominance of that, of that economic system, huge amounts of damage, how that could be a real disruptive influence within that, lead to more localization, leads to more local production, less dominance of the major uh, multinationals, uh, potential therefore for much more uh, innovative, uh, disruptive, useful use, and potentially more democratic input into that. So technology could be uh, and will be a significant part of a sustainable future if that technology is pointed in the right way. It won't be the only thing, you know, technology alone is not going to get us out of this hole. We need to think about, at least in the, in the short to medium term, the amount of meat we eat, the amount of distance we want to travel, 
Um, those things and lifestyle changes are things that we're going to have to think about and try and challenge as well. Uh, but technology has a, certainly a significant role in, in creating a sustainable future. OK, well, well thanks to Mike there. Um, I'm, I'm personally always really intrigued by, by the sort of almost the, the, the duality of future studies. You know, on, on the one hand, we, we've got incredible technology on the horizon, nanotechnology, 3D printing, robots, synthetic biology, all, all that stuff, which potentially is forcing us towards a, a technological singularity, an incredible future. And yet, on the other hand, as Mike put it so well, we've dug ourselves into a very, very deep hole environmentally. And if we don't deal with those issues, we won't have the resources. We might not already have the resources to build that sort of future. And for me, that it's, it's the interplay of those two issues that the technological possibility and the environmental um, certainties we have to deal with is the really interesting part of future studies. One of the other things that struck me in what Mike said, what I thought, I thought was really uh, intriguing is this idea that 3D printing uh, is one of potentially many technologies that might be quite disruptive, not just in, in how we make things, but in, in the way our whole sort of economic system works, that you know, it, it might challenge our need for big organisations and, and the way they, they impact on our lives. So I thought it might be nice to raise that as a broader question. So if you've got, if you've got any views on 3D printing, um, not just about whether it's going to be a big technology or not, but will it be transformative, will it change, will it dis disrupt our economy? Um, Please leave, leave your answers on this issue down in the comments section here. And please also raise any questions you've got I can talk about in the next Future Questions show. So if you've got any questions about um, robotics or artificial intelligence or 3D printing or nanotech or future cities or whatever it is, um, ask them down in the comments section or contact me on Twitter. I'm at Chris Barnett on Twitter and I will try and answer those in the next um, version of the Future Questions show. Um, but for now, that's it for another video, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.